Blindness in akhirat, does it is it like an indication that you know you can't see the sirat and therefore you would Excellent. most likely go Excellent. to Excellent, you, you fall. Yes, that's what it means. You are in trouble. You are already blind. Where do you think you're gonna go? You didn't cross the sirat. With the 2020 vision, you may fall. How about when you don't see? It means you are doomed. Very good. Good question. Let me see, mashallah. First question. How does haram income, riba, interest, corruption, affect the well-being of a family? Very good. How does haram income, between parentheses, riba, interest, corruption, affect the well-being of a family? How? How does it do? Then the second question, the concept of Allah is the source for sustenance versus work and dunya. Why people result to riba, to corruption, Greed. and to interest? Greed. Lack of iman. Lack of the presence of the Quran in your life. If you allow the Quran to be part of your life, then, wallahi al mountains of corruption will not move you. Mountain, if they give you a mountain of Uhud full of gold, say, no, I don't want it. Why? Because you are afraid of Allah. You know Allah is watching you. You know Allah doesn't accept that. And you know with that mountain or not, you die and you go without it. So you will not do it. So, the result for people to be greedy, to be stingy, to be thieves, to accept bribery, to get involved in the riba, is the lack of Iman in their hearts, the lack of Quran in their hearts. Or they didn't allow the Quran to change them. It's not the pressure of life. A poor person may say, no, I don't want. Poor. His children need money to go to school. He will not. She will not. It's the fear of Allah. Yusuf alayhi salam, when he refused zina with uh, Zulaikha, the wife of minister, beautiful woman, Quran said. There, it wasn't, it wasn't because he was not, uh, he was so handsome. And that's what made her go crazy. She invited him, she prepared everything. The fear of Allah, the fear of Allah, it made him stay away from those things. <coughs> Maryam alayhi salam, all the people were telling her, no man has touched you. How can you have this baby? Meaning you are doing things behind our back. The Quran said no. No. The fact that the baby spoke to them. Baby speaking to you. You go crazy if a baby does that. You go like. Mm -hmm. He said, I am Abdullah. This is my mother. She did not commit any fahisha. I am the spirit of Allah. So how does haram income affect? Look, my sisters and brothers, the moment you allow the haram to enter your life, the barakah disappears. Number one, flies. What is barakah, Sheikh? Barakah is a soldier of Allah that is hidden. You don't see it, you don't see it, but it's always there with you. Wherever you go, there is blessing. Uh, you eat like a king, although you are not king or queen. You drive a nice car. You. Uh, your children are, uh, alhamdulillah, healthy. They go to school. Not major problems in your life. This is called barakah. The moment you start being involved in riba or in uh, corruption, you know what happens? No problem. Your income is very high. But your out, your in is high. But your out is higher. Now diseases start spreading. Oh my God, what's going on? Your car breaks, always a new. New. I don't understand. And when you take it to the mechanic, he himself doesn't understand. No barakah. One alim said, Wallahi, I realize my sins in the, in the misbehavior of my camel. The camel doesn't listen to him like she used to. What's going on? I fed her very well last night. I gave her water. What's going on? 
He says, I know I, I did something wrong. So how about major sin? Like riba. And you see, no, never enough, never enough. Tachuko, tachuko. That is dangerous. Very dangerous. Uh, you have a nice car, you feel like you cannot tolerate this car anymore. I want a new one. But the car is okay, it's still mashallah, everybody is jealous of you. No, I want to change it. Uh, you start always comparing yourselves to those who have. So that is the impact. Another thing, na'udhu billah, you are feeding yourself and your children so it. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, any meat or skin that grows out of fat, fat, he mentioned fat. Any fat that grows out in your body out of haram, fannaru awlabi. Jahannam has right over it. You have to go to Jahannam first. Uh, get rid of that your barbecue, so you lose that fat, then, uh, then Allah sends you to Jannah. Why? 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 Okay, I took uh, corruption to send my son to school. My son doesn't finish school. Many of people, the children, because maybe littered from sweat, Allah al-Adim, they, mashallah, they go beyond what you expect them. You expect them uh, BA, they get PhD. Halal. Now, because, oh, you know, I have to take this project, I have to take this, because uh, I have children to go to school and... And the woman who tolerates that, she knows her husband is a uh, winky banky. Her husband will look for another one against her. Now you hear the fan. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Like <laughs> the end of that. Complete silence. <laughs> Many women, they say, why my husband looks for another woman? Because he accepted his riba, and he has so much, and he <clears throat> wants to play, he wants to find his youth. And you are no more young for him. So that too, 121 years old. And you add that in, 60 plus. <laughs> he still thinks he is young. Takbir. <laughs> ah, my sister. This is real, real, real. It's happening. No baraka, more pain, pain, pain. Not physical necessary, emotional pain, <coughs> spiritual pain. Ah, why? Why? You should have stopped your husband that day, sister, say, please, fear Allah. No. Salih women, Salih women. When the husband is leaving, she is standing by the door, giving him his jacket or whatever, and she says, fear Allah in us, please. Fear Allah. Why? Because her husband could be a very important person, public servant, and, you know, a contractor wants this to pass fast. So he says, sir, I give you the man says, well, you know, temptation. Shaitan is working on him. But the woman reminded him. Huh? And the man doesn't know what he's getting. He's a man. I don't see it. The woman, she says, lower your gaze. No, no. Don't fear Allah. <laughs> don't look at anyone. I kill you. <laughs> it works. Threats sometimes works. <laughs> yes. So, my sisters and brothers, uh, no, no, the, you will be impacted. In dunya, let alone in akhirah, na'udhu billah. In akhirah, just remember, you, you, okay, you took that bribery, and it was big money. Uh, you have, you know, stolen money. You have, uh, do you take it with you? Do you take it with you? When you die, at least take it with you. So, why you do it? Another thing, if you love your kids, don't, you should never feed them. Maybe you are bad, but you don't feed them that. Maybe you are bad, and you don't care about yourself. You don't want to go to hell, but you want your kids to go to hell? <laughs> no, serious. Man, some of us, we parents don't care, you know? But do you care, really, for your kids? Yes. I love my kids. Okay, don't feed them. Feel Allah. And what goes around comes around. I swear by Allah, as you do to people, it will be done to you and your kids. Don't do that. 
don't Allah put you in this public position or this big position, mashallah, private or whatever, make it easy for people. Hire people who are forgiven. Make it easy. Allah al they will re remember you as a very good person. But you make it difficult and make money out of it, you will see. Yes, sir. But what if, say, this person has already taubat? Ah, very good. Then Excellent. what does he do with the money? Very good. Excellent. This is a very good question. It's a practical question. What, Shaykh, if someone has already done that? No problem. The tawbah of Allah and His Rahmah are bigger than your sins. Remember this. And as long as you repent and ask Allah forgiveness, Allah will forgive you. Now, if you wrong someone, if you have taken money from someone, like theft, you must return it. You must. Sheikh, but they will know who I am. Allah knows already. Now, imagine, I, can I return the money without telling who I am? No problem. I return it to the fund or to whatever. But no, I took it from someone. Can I return it where I, I took it from? No problem. But if you slandered someone, ah, you slandered someone, you must declare him or her innocent. Like you slandered them, you must declare them. Let people say, you're bad. It's you who made fun. No problem. That's my tawbah, ya Allah. Let's say I slandered someone. I need to go and declare them innocent, the way I spoke bad about them. Hear me out, hear me out. Hey, hey. Shakespeare's uh, English. Uh, you know the so-and-so, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so? I said that they committed zina it. They are innocent. May Allah forgive you. I was wrong. Then Allah will forgive you. At this moment, he forgives you. So if someone has taken bribery, should he return it to the... No. Because he will give it to somebody else. But give it away, he said, Give it away. Sure, it was millions. Who told you to take millions? <laughs> it's not my problem. It's your problem. No discount. You want discount from me? Hey, you took two million. If you still have them, use them. If you have eaten them, ask Allah to forgive you. What can you do? But do as much good as you can to erase that sin. For example, I took a bribe of one million ringgit. God forbid. And I don't have it. I, I used it. Now tawbah, I realize, alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah. What to do? If from my halal money, I can, inshallah, now help people. Sadaqat, sadaqat. Whatever, whatever venue of good I do, as much as I can. If I pass that million, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabb, forgive me. If I did more than that, Ya Allah accepted Sadaqah. If I did less than that, Ya Rabb, I was trying until death came. Sisters, that's why Hukuk al Ibad are worse than Hukuk Allah. In paying back. In paying back. You have wronged someone versus you wronged Allah. Which one is easy? Allah. Allah, Allah forgives. But that person. He doesn't want to forgive you, especially when he sees uh, his scale uh, in between. Hmm. He has uh, his takot, more like anyone else. He sees Jahannam. Uh, you, you are the one who took something from me. Ya Rab, I want it. Brother, please forgive me for Allah's sake. No, cannot. I, brother, I'm going to hell. I need any hasanat. <coughs> you don't have hasanat, he gives you from his bad deeds. <laughs> now you are in trouble. That's why my sisters, whenever, our brothers, whenever you wrong someone, immediately, I am sorry. And the worst to wrong are your parents, then your spouses. Careful. Careful a man abuses his wife. This happens a lot. You know, she's nice, always patient, sabar, she doesn't say. Ah. And some women also abuse their husbands. Careful. The husband is very good. Easy going. Oh. Therefore, my brothers, and don't let anyone abuse your wife, including your parents. Don't yell at them, but says, Mom, Dad, please. Don't just be quiet. Your wife is a human being, too. Huh. Look at your wife if uh, anyone says anything. She becomes lioness defending you. But you, when someone is saying something to her, you just, Sabah. You go to Jannah. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Serious. 
I don't know why I'm talking about this. <laughs> I feel, I feel for you. I don't know. Okay. So please do not. Because the barakah will be taken away. Your children will suffer. And you feed them haram. The Yom al Qiyamah, they will tell you, Dad, why you did this to us? Why? They say, you rather put nasi lemma once a day and we are happy than you, you used to put three, four, five, uh, you know, what call it, opportunities of food and it was all haram. And you ladies, be careful when your husbands give you gifts from haram. Because shaitan now is on you. You become like me. 